Hello and happy Friday the 13th. Um, got this shirt on again. And today I wanted to talk about the 2009 reboot of Friday the 13th. Um, uh, obviously this was the Shout Factory version. Which has the <laughs> original Blu-ray, which I also have, but see the I've got the, the box set of all the Friday the Thirteenth films. I figured, why not uh, get this out <laughs> there? Um, and uh, recently, the Arrow 4K release came out, and I watched those again. Also, the theatrical cut and the extended killer cut and interestingly enough uh, these versions actually do give the um, killer cut an unrated uh, you know say it's unrated where uh, the previous the original uh, DVD and blu-ray of uh, of this gives the uh, the Killer cut, um, uh, an R rating also, which is interesting because it has more stuff. You know, the theatrical cut is 97 minutes. The extended cut is 105. This has 106, but, you know, probably like a matter of seconds but where one rounds it up to 106 and one to 105, but... You know, all in all, uh, this includes all the special features from the previous Blu-ray and uh, DVD set. So, you know, seven best kills and hacking, hacking back, slashing forward, trivia track with picture in picture. Um, Yeah, this uh, one has excerpts from the trivia track, so I didn't actually <laughs> watch that, but uh, this one has a pretty good uh, amount of new stuff, too, which is nice. Obviously, this is a, a 4K Blu-ray, so there's no normal Blu-ray disc, but uh, very good uh, transfer for 4K. Uh, both versions look excellent um, and um, yeah now I've already talked about this film overall my general thoughts in 2021 uh, when I did all of the Friday the 13th films and um, this is 15 years old and um, I saw this in the theater when it came out 15 years ago, in February, um, and my thoughts are still the same. I enjoy this film. I know not everybody likes it, um, and I think of all the horror remakes and reboots, this is one of the better ones, um, and also because it's Arrow. Not only is this the original normal cover, but it does come with this, which is the same as that but this has a little slip cover hence why I changed it um, but I can also change the Shout Factory one real quick take this and I can have also the uh, there you go just the hockey mask and the logo there and uh and I, I keep it like this, because, well, I mean, that's all cool, you know, on the back. Um, there is Jason standing there at the, by the lake, looking at the woman in the water. Um, but I don't know, I like this image of Jason on the back. And I also just have always liked this, hence why I have it like, hence why I have it exactly like this so uh, 
with the Aero Edition, there is an upgrade, obviously, with the quality, 4K quality. And also, there is more special features, and so there is all that. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, you know, all the various remakes and reboots of the kind, or of the, of the time, um, I always thought this was one of the best, because, you know... They do kind of treat it like, you know, it's Friday the 13th. Rob Zombie tried to do an origin thing with Michael Myers for Halloween. Didn't go over super well and that everybody loved it. That's sort of a big mixed bag. Some people like it, some people don't. I'm, I guess somewhere in the middle, I appreciate what he was doing, though perhaps the execution wasn't the best because also there are is the fact that it kind of takes away some of the mystique of Michael Myers. Um, this film was directed by Marcus Nespel, who uh, did the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which, yeah, it's, that's an interesting film. You know, there are things about that I like, and there are other things I'm like, I'm not too fond of. Um, Arlie Ermey is in the film though, and he is excellent. So I would say, if anything, you know, if you're curious about that film, it will be really worth watching just for early Ermy. He is great. Um, though there are more brutal kills in, by Leatherface in <coughs> Texas Chainsaw Remake. Um, and there are brutal kills in this film, too. Um, but, yeah. They keep saying this is a remake, 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 and well, as I've mentioned before, you know, this is a reboot because it is really taking elements from the first four Friday the 13th films. You know, we see Jason in his uh, uh, sack for a while, and then he gets his hockey mask. Um, we see a brief glimpse of Mrs. Voorhees at the very beginning and young Jason and then him seeing her get killed and then that's what of course spurs him to go and kill people and then there is a sibling looking for like there's a brother looking for a sister who in this film uh, she she's dead uh, he's trying to hunt Jason whereas in this film uh, Clay, played by Jared Padalecki, is looking for uh, Whitney, his sister. Um, and, um, yeah. He doesn't know or think she's dead because uh, in the reboot, it's like six weeks later after all of Whitney's friends are killed, uh, she's still missing. And, yeah. Um, so there is that aspect of a sibling, you know, out and about on Crystal at Crystal Lake, while uh, in a way, you know, looking around. Um, though, of course, in this film, uh, Rod, you know, he's like, you know, Sandra's dead. But uh, and it's interesting these three films all take place within a matter of days, but, you know, also at the same time, it seems like it's, it sort of seems a bit longer just because of how, you know, these films, 1980, 1981, 1982, 1984. Um, so yeah, it's interesting how there are similarities. And also on the back here, you know, Jason does come through the window and grabs Clay and he has to, you know, fight him off of him. And, uh, yeah. So there are various moments that echo these four films. Um, by so many, these are the best films of the franchise, the first four. Um, I definitely think that. I mean, obviously I've given my thoughts on all of them. But, you know, I just wanted to come back and talk about this. 
It's an interest. It's a very good film. I enjoyed. I think it's excellent. Um, of course, not everybody thinks that. Everybody's different. And also, not everybody likes horror films. So if you're one of those who is not fond of horror films, you're probably not ever going to really want to watch any of these, let alone all 12. This is the 12th one. Freddy vs. Jason was the uh, crossover. So that would be Friday the 13th, 11. Of course, Jason X was when they went to space. And, you know, Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday, which was an interesting thing to call the ninth film, considering New Line just bought the franchise, and so they're going to just immediately kill him off. That's a weird decision, but... Uh, obviously, Jason comes back somehow, and that was interesting. Um... Um, the Paramount films, they always try to have a continuity, which I think is appreciative. I like that. You know, franchises that go on for like eight films don't always do that. You know, obviously, as a reboot, um, all those, you know, and this world didn't happen. You know, they kind of, I mean, in a way they do, but with this film, they... We don't get to see Mrs. Voorhees being the main killer. So that's another thing that kind of debunks the whole remake thing. If it's a Friday the 13th remake, she has to be the killer. And Jason is only a kid. Who we see in little flashbacks of him drowning. Um, and if there was a sequel, it would have been drowning. You know, quotes around that. But, yeah, this is a fine film, I think. Um... Again, if you're not a horror fan, you probably won't enjoy this. And even if you are a horror fan and like Friday the 13th, there are people who aren't fond of this. And that's okay. And I think also, especially with all the various remakes and reboots, kind of unnecessary, which I will agree with. But again, this one, they kind of seem to understand and know, you know, this this franchise is... You know, uh, teens go to Camp Crystal Lake. They're getting high. They're getting drunk, uh, having sex. Jason lives there. Jason's going to find them, and he's going to kill them. And that's what people really want. And, well, this film does do that. Though some people are like, Jason shouldn't run, even though in these he actually does run a good uh, deal though so perhaps in in the well perhaps in some of these three he runs some he might run more some he might run less but I don't know it's an interesting thing some people are like he should never run and if he runs oh that awful horrible way to portray Jason just fall on horrendous um Derek Mears, who plays Jason in this, is excellent. Does a great job. Um, Ted White in Part 4 is still my favorite, but I like Derek Mears. And quite honestly, all the guys who've been Jason have all done a very good job. I wouldn't say any there was any that was full-on bad. Um, you know, I know uh, uh, Steve Dash, that's good. Deskowitz, um, in part two, did most of the stunts, but Warrington Gillette got the credit, and he comes in at the end, popping out for the big shock and scare, which was his really main contribution, but, you know, that was really his, uh, time to shine, and, um, I've not really seen a whole lot of what else Warrington Gillette has done, but overall, uh, so while I don't have anything necessarily outright against him and his body of work, I am not being overtly honest in that he was there for a bit and wasn't the main guy. That's something that's quite unfortunate that he never did, uh, has never really said, and of course Steve Dash is now passed on. Same as Ted White. Um, and uh, this film was not a huge success, um, wasn't a full-on failure, but it wasn't one like, you know, this was a 
New Line Cinema and Paramount Pictures uh, film, both studios came together and, you know, um, helped produce this film, which was quite nice, you know. It's like, finally, 50%, <laughs> they, they could both have 50%, basically, you know, because Friday the 13th, the name, is owned by Paramount, and, um, you know, New Line owned Jason and Crystal Lake and all that stuff, but the name was with Paramount. They wanted a new one, and so they had to come together and help produce this film together. So that's nice, you know. At least, like, splitting the profits <laughs> is a pretty good thing, though, of course, you know, there's distribution. So one handled, uh, like, I think America primarily, and the other handled international distribution. Um, and now Warner Brothers has the franchise and they're trying to do a new TV show whether they will ever succeed I don't know don't want to say they won't but you know seems to be having some various issues like for a while it's like that show was was cancelled but now it's being reworked um, you know Kevin Williamson was supposed to write an episode at least, at least one, and, um, you know, the whole lawsuit thing is done and over with, but, you know, a sequel to this would have been cool, um, I think, a lot of people wanted Jason in the winter, so, you know, like, Christmas time, like, December, Friday, Friday, December 13th, <laughs> people come to spend, a, uh, uh, Christmas or winter in the, uh, you know, the cabin, <clears throat> you know, taking the rest of the year off and just enjoying themselves, and all the while Jason's coming and killing people, and then blood would be in the snow and all that, so things of that sort were things that, you know, fans wanted, and some seem to have reported that at least in some scripts, that might have been a thing. You know, I've I've read and seen so many things at this point. It's like, what was true and what wasn't, I don't know. Probably various versions of a sequel uh, to this. But, yeah. Um, and in the end, we don't know what exactly happens to the two characters left. Are they alive? Are they dead? We don't know, because, well, again, no sequel happened, and it just kind of, like, a jump scare, but, you know, there was a sequel. We will probably get some sort of answer, but, you know, we don't, but, yeah, so, um, and Derek Mears, you know, he was contracted to do a sequel or another uh, Platinum Dunes film. A sequel never came, and I don't know if he did a Platinum Dunes film, but I I don't recall offhand if he did or not, but I don't want to say one way or another. Um, and of course, like Arrow does, you get cool stuff in here. Um, and this I thought was really cool. Um, greetings from Crystal Lake. A little postcard, but and on the back says, not for, pr not for sale, promotion, for promotional use only. So I guess you, it's not necessarily recommended you send this, but, uh, I mean, I wouldn't anyway, but that'd be something if people uh, did, and then all of a sudden you get some card from somebody, you know, and an advertisement for aeroplayer.com, you know. You know, stream killer cult films. And then there's a new Fist of Fury with Jackie Chan, spelled with a Y. And, uh, of course, there is a poster, which, again, has to let you know it's for promotional use and not for... Sale. Uh, one side, it's the one cover. 
which is a pretty cool cover. You know, there's the sack and there's the hockey mask and there's the sack. Um, and of course, there's the main poster. June 13th, Boy Drown. Mother decapitated by a camp counselor. So while this doesn't necessarily have an overall, you know, multiple uh, uh, little cards, essentially, you get this and then also a uh, little book, which has some stuff about, you know, cast and crew, as well as a tribute to the blood soap legacy of Jason Voorhees, little essays and stuff, and... Uh, uh, another essay, Welcome to Crystal Lake, the topography of American Terror and Friday the 13th, and then stuff about the restoration. Uh, Jason's right behind her. I'm sure she'll be fine, though. And, uh... And so, yeah. Boy Drowns! On this day, June 13th, 1980, Crystal Lake Memorial Pages, summer 2009. Uh, on this day, boy drowns, mother decapitated by a camp counselor. Missing, have you seen Whitney Miller? If you have any information, call Clay Miller or police. Camp Crystal Lake is closed. No plans to reopen cursed grounds. Cabin's unsafe for exploring. Police chief says, stay out. Wow. Crystal Lake Police. Uh, CL Police Department, Bolton. Maze of, maze of tunnels not made by hikers. Cops can't forbid or can't find crops. Authorities skunked on who's been... Uh, who's behind gorilla operation. Urban legends, Jason Voorhees. Campfire tales based on local murder, murders. And there you go, and there's pot leaves because somebody's people are growing uh, those kind of crops um, so I get this and you know other arrow releases you know they have stuff like that but also you know books also if it comes in a you can slide in and out quite quick but yeah overall I'm quite happy with this release it's very Excellent transfers. Uh, movie looks and obviously sounds great. Um, and um, and I still like it. You know, again, not everybody's cup of tea. You know, but, you know, when it comes to a, a remake, a reboot with horror, as so many horror franchises were remade or rebooted in one way or another. Friday the 13th, the people who made this seem to understand and know what the franchise was from the get-go. And of course, that's the discs. Disc 1 is a theatrical cut, and then disc 2, the killer cut. So, yeah. Um... Very good film. I, uh, yeah. Didn't really want to go over the synopsis of the f film as I did before, but still, I, I find it's a fine movie. My opinion has not changed since the last uh, time I spoke about this film. Um, so, yeah. If you enjoy Friday the 13th, the 
Friday the 13th franchise. Um, what do you think about this movie? Do you enjoy it? Do you dislike it? Um, and regardless of what you, I guess, perhaps, well, I guess why or why not, but also, if you, uh, regarding all the horror remakes and reboots of the 2000s and 2010s, where do you think this lies? I think it's one of the best, you know, perhaps the best of the remakes and reboots, you know. They didn't just outright remake the original. Um, though, of course, there's been arguments that the sequels are what made the original the, uh, the true classic it is now. And I think one could make pretty good arguments for that. I've heard some good arguments. Others have argued it's just a classic anyway. But regardless, what do you think about this? Perhaps not necessarily, I, you know where you would rank this amongst the franchise, because some people I see, they rank it the, you know, if it's not at the very bottom, it's close to the bottom, and, you know, obviously everyone has a different preference, but I think also, be interesting, where do you think uh, this ranks amongst, like, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, or Nightmare on Elm Street remake, uh, Halloween remake, um, I know they kind of rebooted Candyman. I have not seen that. They did redid a Child's Play with Mark Hamill voicing the uh, Chucky. They did a shot-for-shot -shot remake of Psycho in Color. And, uh, and there's been other remakes and reboots of some sort with the or with of some of these old films, be they franchises or not. So where would this rank amongst them? High, low? I guess also perhaps you can't obviously say where you would put this film in the franchise. Uh, again, I get people aren't super fond of this film, but, you know, I don't think it's all that terrible, but that's me. Maybe I'm a little too nice, perhaps, but I don't know. You know, I watched it for what it was when I was... 14. I wasn't yet 15 when I saw this in the theater. Um, but, you know, my, my mom took me and a friend to see this, and we enjoyed it. We thought it was really good. And we did prefer this over the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, remake a year later. But, yeah, what do you think about this film? I think it's fine. Is it good? Is it bad? So where you ranks amongst the franchise itself and other remakes and reboots with a big horror craze that really came to be very prominent in the 2000s and uh, 2010s. Of course, by uh, like, the, like the 80s and 90s, there were some remakes for sure, but not as many as there just really became like boom, boom, boom for horror franchises and other films, but yeah, G give your thoughts if you'd like, um, and yeah, don't really have much to say, so I'll uh, cut it off here before we hit exactly 30 minutes, so uh, please stay care, have a great day, have a great weekend, and if you're at a, near a Crystal Lake, at or near a Crystal Lake, uh, be sure to that, you know, do drugs, uh, drink alcohol, or have sex, or, you know, anything fun, because, you know, if you do that today, you, uh, you could meet a guy in a hockey mask, it might not be the best ending. Uh, and with that, I hope you all have a, you'll all just take care. See you all later. Bye.